Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's the regularly scheduled meeting of the Select Board of the Town of Sunderland. Today's date is November 28th, 2022. Jeffrey, let's please call to order at 634. First thing up on our agenda is the minutes of November 21st. I motion to approve the minutes of November 21st. Seconded. Okay, we have a motion made to approve the minutes as presented for November 21st. Hearing no other comments, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeffrey, we've got three zero. Next up, we have the Blue Heron. I aye. knew that face. Uh, we had the Blue Heron, the extension of hours on December 31st. Jeff, what do you got? Uh, the Blue Heron is requesting a extension of hours to 1 a.m. on January 1st, 2023, but that's the evening of December 31st for uh, New Year's Eve. So, Jeff, what's the, what's the latest they could stay open? Do we extend it to 2 o'clock that day? Is that is that extended by the state? Does the state extend it to 2? Uh, the state does extend it to 2 on did you want that? I, I'm fine with going home at one, but we can still go home I'm, I'm until two. <clears throat> it's, it's up to you. I just wanted, I didn't know if you knew. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. We should go all the way to two. I mean, that makes the most sense. The dishwasher's going to be there that late. Well, there's some advantages because if you stay open to two, then, you're, then your staff, if they're cleaning up and everything, then we're not, you know, you can still close at one, but then your staff can stay to two to clean up and everything without a problem. Right. So if you'd like to do that. I would. Can we offer that, Jeffrey? Yes. And then an additional 90 minutes for the staff and customers to leave? Um, no. The, the so right here, if you look at it, it says they want to be open till 1. Yeah. And then an additional 90 minutes for employees and vendors to leave the premises. Yeah. But we're just going to say to 2 o'clock. Till 2, yeah. with no 90 minutes to leave the premises correct so everyone has to be off the property by two yeah he says he wants to be in bed at one anyways <laughs> all right so well no be in bed by 10, but that's okay. <laughs> because this way it was actually 2 30. i know but 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 that way they could not drink or correct. have any alcohol out after one after one o'clock make sense yes oh no it makes sense to me it's just just want to make sure we're not shortchanging him that he really feels like he needs 90 minutes to get everybody off the property. Well, you know, the reality of it is we probably would need all the time that we could get. However, at that point, I want to lock the doors and go home. So if there's things that need to get done the next day. I saw you out there. Your, your team was out there smoking the other day, huh? The cooks? Yeah. I'm thinking about something to try and hide that. Somewhat. I don't really feel like taking it away from them because it is a stressful gig. I get that, but some okay. way of. I went to a class on high temp smoking. Yeah. I I did a brisket, believe it or not, and I would never have thought this three hours. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and I'll tell you what, it was the finest brisket I've ever made, and that was a that was a seventeen pound brisket. Yeah. Four hours. Sorry, four longer hours. Longer the time, longer the time, better the product. That's what they always said, but that's not true. You can go over. You can mess it up. That's for sure. Oh, of course. That's hey, maybe it was me that you saw out there. I did. I smoked all the pork chops. Last did you? Week, Wednesday, I think. Yeah, I saw this. Yeah, I, I was. I said, oh, they're they're. Yeah. But but the I, I I took a class down in Georgia about high temp. He, he cooks hot hot and fast. Huh. Right. And up and it was four hours, on a. 15 17 pound brisket and that that thing was but the secret was that he allows it to rest for four hours mm. and it it was spectacular That's right, i forgot you were the barbecue guy huh i have done a few yeah i have done a few but i i, I was but i but i was i was i because i i swore would never but there was there was a guy that came down that was did some barbecue competitions and and uh, QX um, something Q, Q, Q a PD or something like that was his team name 
and he cooked half fast. He and because most of us are up at eleven o'clock and you spend the whole night up. Right. Right. He get up about five thirty, start throwing stuff on. Ninety minutes for his chicken. You know, it's, it's like what the hell are you doing? And he ends up winning. So anyway, <coughs> do we want to? Taking the original intent of what he sent, say, 2 o'clock, yeah. which is alcohol, plus 30 minutes for his staff to finish cleaning up. So he gets the 2.30 that he was asking for, and then there's a little bit of time after people leave. I mean, I've worked in a, in a restaurant slash nightclub before, and man, it's hard to try to clean everything up when you have people still underfoot. It is. I think for us, the, the secret there is that the food is going to be done earlier than mm -hmm. the party. Yep. So that... A lot of that cleaning will be done probably before midnight, and there'll just be glasses that we'll be left with. Okay. So, not the end of the world. I think that we're fine for two. Okay. Yep. All right. Let's do two. Two work. I'll do them. Uh, um, did Did we uh, have any uh, police or fire or anything? Have anything to say? No. Any comments? Nope. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. I motion we grant an extension of the liquor license still. 2 a.m. on actually be January 1st, right? How do you want it? The word July 31st to January 1st? December 31st, probably not July. Can stay open until 2 a.m. on yeah. January 1st, 2023. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. To stay open until 2 a.m. on January 1st, 2023. Seconded. Okay. Have a motion made and seconded. To extend the hours of Blue Heron, this is done by Massachusetts general law. They allow twice a year, I think, right? Twice a year for extension, extended hours. Uh, and the Blue Heron till 2 a.m. New Year's Eve into New Year's morning. Any comments? Nothing on the TV. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, we have three zero. Congratulations. You can stay up to two thirty in the morning. Thank or you. two. Thank you very much. What's the other holiday that allows us to stay open that late? <coughs> I, I I think you can you have one choice, one day. Ah. I think. I and again I don't I haven't read the law lately. Um but I, I, I thought there was there was two you had a license owner had two opportunities. One was had had two opportunities to do that. So if you had something, so you're typically now you close what at ten? Yeah. So you could extend it. I I think you you may be able to extend it one night, one additional night. Hmm. Okay. Do you want to know when my birthday is? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <one's> birthday. <laughs> what were you using for what were you using for wood the other day? Uh, we use a mix of applewood and cherry. Hmm. Yeah. Cherry gets the fire going, the apple keeps it smoking. Every once in a while, we'll use mesquite. We'll mix it in. Yeah, mesquite, yeah, really mesquite to me, to mesquite, but but uh, cherry, I think, darkens the stuff also. It does, and the mesquite has a very distinct flavor. I've always liked apple. It just seems to do the best job. Yeah, when when you, it's funny when you go south and you talk to people, they use it. Talk about post oak, and and the only reason they use it in mesquite is because they have to, because they don't have apple. Right. And sugar maple. Sugar maple, another good one also, if yeah. you can get it. Yeah, working in Utah for years at um, Sundance Ski Resort, the, when I started there in 95, all of the kitchen equipment was wood-fired at that time. So yeah. saute, grill, rotisserie, everything was wood-fired, which is very interesting to try and maintain those temperatures all night. But we had guys that were the only job they had was to bring buckets of wood into the kitchen to keep our fires going. And it was all apple. Really? All apple yep. Aaron Franklin, down. I talked when I was down in Austin. I talked to him. He has his pits are twenty four seven, nonstop, yep. and he has um, eight people. No, twenty people that operate his pits. And he burns through eight cords of wood a week. Imagine going through eight cords of wood. <clears throat> But he was fascinating to talk to, just because he designed. I got pictures of his uh, his smokers and stuff. And he designed everything himself, and he's got little boards so they're tracking what's being done in each one. But I just thought it was amazing. Just yeah. cool. eight cords, and and, they, and everything has to be 
140 briskets a day. Wow. All prime. Wow, that's eight quarts. That's wild. Twenty-five dollars a pound he charges. I don't even do four quarts from my house in the winter. I know. It's crazy. Yeah. All right. Good. Well, congratulations. Thank Good job. Much. Alrighty. Next up, we have Linda Dunlevy, the FERCOG, Franklin Regional Council Government Executive Director. She wants to talk to town priorities for federal ARPA funds. Shoot, Hi. Linda. Hi. Um, the COGS, in sometime in January, we're going to receive funding that will... Um, that is to be used for us to write grants for federal discretionary funds for the municipalities of Franklin County. So we are visiting all the towns to see what project priorities are so that we can keep track of what every town's project priorities are and then start to search for funding sources to see if there is discretionary federal funding to meet those needs. Have you talked to Linda about our uh, our two projects? Which two projects? The the one that we had the the, the village center committee come and talk about. Okay, uh, no, I've not. So we we were looking at it, two in particular, and one is our center of town. Yeah. In particular, the intersection. And, and, you know, we, we hear that the state's starting to look at... Making it a roundabout? Yeah. So, I, I'm going to say not everyone's ag against the roundabout, but not everyone's for it. And we don't want to end up in a position like when they rebuilt a bridge and all of a sudden it was blue. <laughs> and there's a, well, how did that get to be blue? And 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 you have don't you have very little to say, so one one of, one of our priorities is to try to look at options and 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 how those options would tie into a community center. So you guys would be interested in that also. Yeah. Does that sound that sounds pretty good job, doesn't it? Yeah, and we've actually been talking. We may not need to seek discretionary funds for that because we've been talking about helping you with that just with our regular transportation planning grant yes because we had heard about this issue so we, we talked about that yeah and we'd like to continue one of Maureen's projects yep out here on the uh, school street and so Jeff where do we stand on that we we, yeah. we sorry uh, preliminary designs um, but no engineering work has started yet for school for street. school street yep you know what the cost is? Um, I know what the S, uh, estimation of probable cost yeah. was pre-COVID, which was like uh, a million two, a million five. So just so you know, the, it's reconfiguring um, part of the roadway and the parking associated with it. Um, straightening out the sidewalk basically from the intersection of north main to the library extending it to the crosswalk where the boat ramp is replacing the storm drain underneath and then all the overhead wires would also be buried under the water under the road so that that's sort of the hey there's lauren star hi lauren um local road functionally classed as a local road you assume yes okay Okay, um, that one sounds like we could find funding for it because there's so much transportation funding. Yeah. So what we want you, you said pre-engineering. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We have conceptual stuff yeah. for it, and and like, but we want us we want us, as you know, if you have a shovel ready project, you can, it moves a it, right. If the money become money becomes available so we were talking about do we want to go to 10 percent 25 50 90 whatever and it'd be nice to know and maybe th this is where we thought you would help us is what what would a project like that cost right 
and and what and where could we should we take it right to final design so it's shovel ready okay so let's say the first project we're just going to do yes and the second project can i can you and i get together and review the conceptual drawings absolutely yep okay and I'll send we'll those to you tomorrow at the beginning, okay. and then we can set up a time. Perfect. Okay. Okay. I, I again, you uh, and and I, I, we were talking earlier. I look at a lot of the, the the river walk is like an absolutely amazing, and and nothing could be more telling or more gratifying than running into a grandfather in a wheelchair with his grandson and him saying that he's never been able to look at the river yeah. before. Yeah. That, to me, is... And with the elderly housing, 120 Sanderson <clears throat> going in, it would just be nice that they had, you know, you have the potential for people right. with right. mobility issues. It would just be nice if they had a nice, clear, little, easy walk around there. That's looking beautiful, by the way. It is. It, it's taps uh i we were over there october 24th something like that i'd say it's probably absolutely month, gorgeous huh yeah. it's been about a month yeah it's absolutely it's absolutely gorgeous they're, they're just having are they opening moving in monday or thursday um not quite yet well they've been not not been able to get parts yeah that's that seems to be the whole flow i'm the chair of model development inc you know, I know. Okay. So those are our two biggest ones. How's that okay. to start with? That's great. And if you could find us a senior housing location, that'd be great too. I, I don't, I do not want to underestimate. And, and, <clears throat> but this is something that we're going to have to partner with, with, with Deerfield and Whiteley on. Right. Which is, that would be a good thing to apply for because combining towns combining priorities will make for a strong stronger application yeah i also asked jeff the other day to reach out to one of our surrounding towns um because i i ran into a few of their seniors and they were concerned about they really don't have anything in their town i said well come over to us yeah. we don't have a i mean we don't it's not not just our three town any and and it's actually most senior centers are pretty universal about that i mean we get greenfield people northampton people and we northampton greenfield irving get get our people from our town also so so i said it doesn't matter you can come but if you you know we want to be in a position to if if we do something we want we know we want to be able to reach out also and talk to them so the senior center would be and I, because I, I do not know what's going to happen in Deerfield, because they got they got a lot of things going on. Okay. Okay. L Linda, what what size grants are we talking about? <coughs> do we know that we federal? Can apply for? Yeah. There's really very few limitations on the funding we are receiving. We are literally we are receiving money to help the municipalities. All of the regional planning agencies in Massachusetts are receiving money. We have 18 months to spend the money, and we can apply for as many or as few grants as we find that are appropriate. So I don't think we have enough money to apply for a grant for all 26 towns. I doubt we have enough money to do that because a lot, we help Deerfield with a, with a geothermal grant, and it was a very extensive grant with you had to have a diversity equity <coughs> inclusion plan. You had to have some engineering done in advance. But the more we can, the more we know that the towns want, we can start to search for funding sources. And our thought is, if we can become kind of good at a one funding source, and if we get a lot of towns that have priorities that fit that funding source, that might be a way to extend our funding more, so we'll see. So yes. I, I wanted to mention, I, and I, I defer to the select board, but one of the projects 
it's been on the back burner because it's really expensive is extending sewer service to the southern end of town and i don't know if other towns are going to be asking for sewer stuff but um maybe we could put that at the bottom of our list just to have a better idea of what's out there when we do start going for it that would be good because we figured out those pretty prohibitively expensive to do by ourselves so yeah 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 yes Lauren. since 18 months uh, like apply get the money complete the project no, it's 18 months for us to spend the money applying for grants on behalf of towns. So okay. it, then if we, get, if we get any of the grants, the towns okay. in okay. most likelihood would be responsible for administering. But in some cases, the towns may not have the capacity to administer the grants, so then we would provide those services too. So mm -hmm. the, the one other thing? How about uh, an elevator or access to our old Gray's Memorial Library? Yeah, we're looking for um, that. That's uh, that. Just so you know, Linda, that um, that building is under preservation restrictions. So that's something we have to work with Mass Historic on. Okay. Good to know. But we are looking at, um, <coughs> at that would be an accessibility project. But that, that or at that's least, um, floors one and two. Yep. Um, the probably most likely thing would be a um, independent structure that held a stair, uh, the a um, elevator and accessible bathroom as kind of an attached standalone. Uh, probably, I mean, we have not done, we would love money to do a study on that. Um, it's gonna, it's obviously a very jewel box of a building, so it's yep. gonna have to really, and on a very tight site, so it's yep. gonna be a challenging design project. Um, but I think um, in order to really make better use of the building, uh, if it was accessible, more, uh, more town, organizations could, you know, potentially access it. Yeah. And also the historical societies in there could do more public programming. Okay. And sidewalks on uh, Plum Tree Road. The whole length? Um, maybe. Um, but if, if you go with you know how they the the addition of the housing on that yeah, 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 yeah. now now there's and and <clears throat> my my personal thing is when i go through there at nighttime it's you know there's people walking along 116 now there's people walking along 47 it's more or less it's very dark um they're walking on the roads um we have a history of 116 that you guys helped us with before. Yeah. Now, I know when we were talking, we were discussing um, Bob's Barbecue, we talked about possibly looking into a street light yeah. on that road there. Is that is that state since it's 116, or is that something that we, that would be us, okay. Just like you put a, a sidewalk on a state highway, the state will never take care of it. You have to take care of it. Gotcha. Okay. So that would be something else, is we were, we were talking <laughs> preliminarily about having a street light <laughs> in that section you know, by the, the gas station and Bob's Barbecue there. Um, so who just... Oh, on 116. On 116. Well, one si the, the, that 116 plum tree area. Right. Yeah. But but because of all, all the people walking now, or they walk on 116, they, they walk... So I think... There's no sidewalk on plum tree now, right? No. There's, there's not. 116 in that area? So th yeah. there's a very there's a short sidewalk. A little bit. Kind of in bad shape. Yeah. It, they just put it. They they put in. You'd when next time you drive it there, you take. But you know, Plum Tree Plum Tree has a it's a, a large residential area and yeah. and it has many many people walking. Um, they walk to catch the buses, you know, because the bus the PVTA bus doesn't go up and down the street, so they walk up to use the the bus and stuff. 
so people nighttime walking dogs and you know and again with those apartments it's obviously a place to walk up and down right. plum tree the yeah. challenge on plum tree is the brook right 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 but i also think we have to do something and i was going to tell you that there is two lights there on there's on one on the east there's a light on the east side and the west side but the east side light i don't see on that often so maybe there's a problem with that light but if we can do something look for something on that also but I know we, we've had residents I would say starting Chris Devine probably 15 years ago about sidewalks down there and we just haven't been able to get it done yet ideally you'd go like 116 to South Plain Road yes that would be ideal you could so many walkers yeah I mean that well, because it would almost it would it would tie in with our almost tie in with our uh, last sidewalk on extension on Silver Lane. Right, 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 right. Could we we opened the road up and we marked it? Yeah. For for people walking, so it would actually connect it. So it would be an extension. You don't you don't know the functional class of that road, do you? Plum tree. Um. I would imagine it's a municipal. You, think, you mean county or? Well, just um, if it's eligible for federal TIP funds. Oh, I don't I'm, know. I'm going to guess it's a major collector, and I'm going to find out. All right. We'll is see. that enough? Is that enough to put on your paper? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I filled up a whole page. I know it. It's awesome. Thank you. That's very good because it's also a good variety. So it's uh, research and, and resources. You know, we're, we struck. We're struggling with the uh, the Graves Library. Um, because it is a gorgeous building. We just put a new roof on it not too long ago, 100-year roof. Um, but it well, was it, 20 years ago, Tom, but not that long. <laughs> <laughs> just, just done. Just, it was just done. It was just done. It is 20 years ago, wasn't it, Lauren? It was 20 but, years ago. But, but, uh, but it is a 100-year roof, so that's good. It, yeah, and it's a true hundred-year roof. We we know it because they still had the tiles in Spain. Was it Spain, Lauren? The the roofing, the roof. Spain. They still had. They still had the the. Well, it was funny because it it was we had a historical grant to do it, and they were everyone was concerned about the color, right? Yeah. 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 And when we con when we con when they contacted the the people that made the the tile roof. They still had a sample from when that original roof was built. That's amazing. And they said, "No, this is the original color." So we're, but but try. I mean, the historical swamp field. They they've been you know they have stuff inside there, but it's very hard to get. Right. And it's not being it's not being used to its fullest potential right now. So that would be, if we could, if something could become available, it would be great for that. Because we, we struggled with that. Okay. Another thing we could mention is we had talked briefly about um, looking into new solar opportunities in Sunderland for town solar. Um, and if that's something that a bunch of towns in our area are looking to do, and you had just mentioned that if you can get a, a grant that includes multiple towns that makes it stronger and also is a better use of your resources, um, we would be interested in looking into adding more solar in town. For municipal buildings? Is that what yeah, you mean? <laughs> we have we have we have a, a few areas that town owned land that are, that are not right on transmission lines. So the last time we did the the solar where we put it at the uh, the school, yep. they they kind of knocked it out because because it wasn't on on transmission. It was so maybe now things have changed. In particular, up it's up on Plum Tree Road. We have a large Plum Tree or Ball Hill. Well, they're both, but yeah. but but, but there's, so there's two large areas that we have. Okay. I wouldn't say right. it's like our highest priority, but if you if you right. have other towns that are already looking exactly. into it, you know. <clears throat> All right, you can go home. <laughs> we'll just keep coming right. up with more and more. <laughs> I mean, I need I need a garage, so. You know. We'll figure it out. That'd be good. Thank you, Linda.
Thank you. Very Pre helpful. Very nice Appreciate to meet you. Nice Thanks to see coming. you all. I'm going to go too, but I have a question. That photo on the bottom, is that Mount Toby in the distance? Yes. And if so, what's the vantage point where that was taken from? Up 47 a bit? Uh, that, that's actually, I believe, that's one of the original um, covered bridges that went over the Connecticut River. It almost looks like it was taken from where Hillside Road meets River Road. Could. Looking out that direction. I'm Is just that curious. where the covered bridge was? Huh? No, there was a covered bridge near Hillside no, Road. We'll look at it up close. It was just south of it. Uh, well, I, th I think we had. Thanks for not identifying a covered bridge across the Connecticut River as a new project. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> is that the bridge that fell in the Connecticut River? That, 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 that would solve the blue problem, wouldn't it? Yeah. Which I know. Made it covered. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Thanks. So if you want to talk Absolutely. about uh, briskets and stuff, let me know. I'd be happy to do it. I'll actually be down here tomorrow at some point. I got to talk about some things. Okay. Take care, you guys. Thank you. Have a good one. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Lauren. All right. Next up. Um, Riverside Park policy. Yes. So I updated <coughs> the Riverside Park policy um, per the discussions. Let's see if how do I share my screen? That's not it. So um, there are a couple substantive changes. The first one is right here, um, second paragraph in D. Basically, previously it said only unrestricted donations are acceptable. Um, the particular donation we had was specifically for maintenance, so I added town mate. Basically, my understanding of what the policy was is that <coughs> it was trying to avoid creating additional maintenance work for the town and expenses for the town. That's correct. So the sentence I added is the town may accept restricted monetary donations if they are for the maintenance of pre-existing park amenities, such as the river walk, restrooms, maintenance of plantings. It could also include maintenance of fields, those types yeah. of things. Um, that's the big change. You'll see other, uh, just changing board of selectmen to select board. And then as I was going through, I noticed that um, it requires some involvement of the Community Pathways Committee. Um, so we had to discuss this, but in, in case you think it's a good idea, I added a sentence that's saying, if the Community Pathways Committee is not around, uh, the Recreation Committee can perform that duty and if the recreation committee is not around then the town administrator can perform the duty and it's just creating yep. redundancies so that somebody will be able to do take action to accept them, right? no that makes perfect sense okay looks good to me all right and just put the amended amended on the uh, the bottom of the thing so we can keep track of what amendment we're working off from okay um <coughs> do we need to vote on adopting that or is that just us yeah okay. yeah um Okay. I'm good. All right. So I'll entertain a motion to make the amendment as presented to the Riverside Park donation policy. All right. I motion we accept the changes as highlighted in red for the Riverside Park donation policy. Seconded. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? 
Hearing no discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, three zero. Um, how we how we doing on the restrooms? We're doing good. The uh, procurement was put out on November 16th. Uh, we have a non-mandatory pre-bid meeting this Friday at 10 a.m. Um, and uh, I believe bids are due, I want to say mid-December, and then uh, we anticipate awarding the contract in the first week in January. <coughs> okay. <coughs> All right. Thank you, Jeffrey. Select like board updates. I got nothing. Me neither. The uh, the select board will be presenting the uh, the cane to the town's oldest resident on Friday um, that's that's a pretty that's a pretty uh, that's a that that is a good time that's a good time for us okay Jeff town administrator updates uh, nope hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving welcome back and and so so basically, we're looking into Tritown Beach, mm -hmm. right? And we're also still working on the insurance, the insurance yep. advisory group. Yep. The insurance advisory committee is scheduled to be, uh, I think, December 20th is their next meeting. And then they're going to be meeting more frequently following that. Okay. Anything else? No. Anything else for the good of the town? <coughs> Without hearing anything else, I entertain a motion. A motion we adjourn. Seconded. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff 3-0, declare us out at uh, 712. <laughs>